if they were to become pirates, none of them is beating Enel. That's crazy to think about. It, unless even consider they have like like armament or something, and then With maybe. Admiral Kizaru, or as he's known in this timeline, Captain Borsalino. Now, in case Borsalino. You know, every admiral has a code name that translates in Japanese. Yeah, unless Hunter, if they didn't have hockey, Admiral's they wouldn't be Enel. So they would, they would lose. They would However, since Borsalino never became a marine in this timeline, he never gets this code name. So, what would this guy be like if not for the marines? Let's take a look at his inspiration. You see, every single admiral is based on a famous. And maybe wait, we don't know because Ino could have hockey, right? Actually, that wouldn't be no. Never mind. He's actor. In this never case, Borsalino is based on Kunie Tanaka, an actor well known for playing thugs, mobsters, or even yakuza members. So he's playing so me addition, as a character. Name, I understand. Actually, comes from a French movie called Borsalino, which is also about mobsters. In fact, just look at this old flashback version of Borsalino, and it's even more clear to tell that this guy was clearly modeled after a gangster. And so, yeah, unlike other admirals, he doesn't go on and on. I don't see how you. It seems I just like. I like a Noah. An enforcer for the most powerful gang. Am I Noah? What's some shady? The world governments. Well, let's say that Baby Barcelino didn't want to be a square working for the man. Where would he then go instead? Well, it seems like an organized crime family would be the perfect place for him, which would put him right at home on a crew like Capone Beige's. Unfortunately, though, the timeline doesn't really work for that, since Beige only set sail as a pirate a few years ago in the story. Interesting. But we do, of course, have another wonderful contender for a mafia which is the Don Quixote family. That's right. In this timeline, Borsellino looking for a job where he gets free reign to beat people up would cross paths with none other than the Do Flamingo family. Treble and the other executives would make him an offer that he couldn't refuse. In just the same way that the world government gives Kizaru free reign to deal with pirates, Do Flamingo's status as a celestial dragon also grants his crew a certain degree of Why is he a celestial dragon? So, Don't answer so that. We'll just say that I'm wondering like, why. The way, Borsalino will still get his light like devil fruit. After all, as underworld brokers, the Do Flamingo family is pretty good at procuring anything that they want, including strong devil fruits. And we can even say that Pika helps him get the Pika Pika. Pika. <laughs> don't know why I didn't Pika Pika. Anyways, at no, this me. rate, this kind of raises one big concern. How can Borsalino be a subordinate on Dofi's crew if, let's be real, he is much stronger than Do Flamingo? And to well, it's because he probably follows his dream and ambitions, or he has no place to go. For example, um, I think Zoro can beat Luffy, uh, where I'm at right now, and he's his underling. And it's not because, like, it's it's a power-based system. It's more like uh, he has faith in him, and he's, he's a good leader. He has, like, all the attributes to be a great leader, so he follows him. So... Yeah, I don't think strength really matters when it comes to being a, a, a captain of the crew. To be fair, it is kind of out of the ordinary. Yes, he is. He is slamming Luffy. Stop playing. He's 1,000% slamming Luffy. You know, really strike you as the ambitious captain type? I mean, just remember, he was more 1, than... 1,000%. Sit back and relax while Akainu and Aokiji fought over the... Or it'd be close. Or it'd be close. I reject that. He has the power you tripping? To How? How am I tripping? Lino seems very much happy to play the second fiddle to someone else and not have to carry all those burdensome Yo, he's clipping his nails. come with being the top dog. Now, of course, Do Flamingo having a powerhouse like Borsalino working with him would totally... Where are you in? I'm in Fishman in Island. One piece. I mean, the early beginnings of the trajectory look pretty much the same. They would capture Dress Rosa with ease, and Dofi would be named one of the seven warlords still. However, Doflamingo wouldn't be satisfied stopping there and working as an arms dealer for the other Yonko. Because with the additional power afforded by Borsalino, he would expand his empire and actually become a Yonko with territory on par with Big Mama. Big Mama? And I'd even go so far. Oh, thank you for the follow. I don't see who fall, but uh, against yeah. strong opponents and doesn't have, have a chance. Of, bro, that's so might even grow much stronger compared to where we see him in the story. In other words, once the straw hats would later arrive on Ros Rosa, Dofi would have both Borsalino and Fujitora on his side, allowing him to decimate the straw hat. Yeah, but so they get pulled in, even take out Sanji with a light speed kick. And so, for his status as a Yonko commander, wait, could. Could Kizaru beat Sanji? I don't know if Sanji has hockey or not yet, because I haven't got there. But do you guys think Kizaru could beat Sanji? I'm just curious. You saw Naruto? Oh, absolutely. Next video will be Naruto based, probably. Uh, 
But do you guys think it? Not now. Because I'm destroy Sanji. Dang. Hmm. The strongest at that, Borsalina would earn uh, at least a bounty of one billion berries. Not my sim However, king. This berry is nothing compared to the ones we'll see later in the story. Now, Fujitora, the purple tiger, on the other hand, or Isho, as he's known in the timeline, is Isho? a very mysterious guy. I mean, he's clearly a samurai, and where are samurai from? Well, Wano. as far as we know. And who did we not hear from at all during the Wano arc? Fujitora. Right, Isho. Now, for the sake of argument here, with no other leads to go on, we're just gonna assume for the moment that- Gohan? Argument here, with no other leads to go on- There's another character I know about? We're just gonna assume for the moment that Isho is actually- It's probably like Giant Monkey. just hasn't been revealed quite yet. The Giant Monkey is crazy. all the atrocities committed by Orochi and Kaido in his homeland, he cut out his own eyes and blinded himself. He then probably left Wano to wander the world, very much like the character that he's based on. Why did he just get- wait. He gouged his eyes out because he saw Kaido- wait. Okay, let me go. I'm sorry for going back. ...from Wano, and it just hasn't been revealed quite yet. After seeing all the atrocities committed by Orochi and Kaido in his homeland, he cut out his own eyes and blinded himself. That makes zero sense. Because you saw so many atrocities, you're gonna take your eyeballs out. What? That's like saying, I saw somebody, uh collapsed during a marathon and like they broke their legs so then i'm gonna cut my legs off that makes zero sense what impact does that have you're just nerfing yourself now like you could get your get back but now you're nerfed because you have no eyeballs there's no point he then probably left wano to wander the world very much like the character that he's based on that makes no Zabichi, sense the blind samurai who's portrayed Ooh. by shintaro katsu however in this timeline he first wanders directionless but after finding and eating the gravity fruits ishin believes that he has gained enough power to take his country back in other words oh. he vows to take revenge for his homeland I first and weird, huh? as a pirate the but why take your eyes out allies who are similarly invested in the fight for wano and it just so happens that several survivors from Wano were hiding out creating a new life for themselves in the East Blue. And so in Shimotsuke village, most of the citizens don't have a lot of confidence in their ability to do anything well, he has to cut. Kaido, but Isho does rally a few people, including a tenacious young swordsman with his eyes set on becoming the world's strongest swordsman. Uh, that's right. In Zoro. this timeline, Isho's first mate is none other than a young Rorona Zoro. Mm. Right of Isho's former comrades, Shimotsuke Ushimaru. And oh. the Fujitora that we know has a real love for gambling, we <laughs> be be past him winning some more powerful crewmates through the pirate gambling game known as the Daily Backfight. So maybe after learning about the game from the Foxy uh, Pirates goes and hard. defeating them, they use this game to recruit more strong allies to advance on the forces of Wano. And once they finally sail on Wano, Kaido's forces would see a fleet of ships approaching, bearing an ominous Jolly Roger. A skull crushing down to earth like a meteor. Now, I think the forces of the Beast Pirates would be completely caught off guard as giant meteors crash down upon Onigashima. In other words, the Beast Pirates would now be under siege by Isho, captain of the Meteor Pirates. And using this as their opportunity to attack, the Red Scabbards would also come the out Red of to serve as allies in the sudden war on Kaido and Orochi's forces. Mm. Then, after a hard-fought battle, a meteor would plunge Kaido into the depths beneath Wano to burn in the magma Mount Fuji, and for defeating a Yonko, Isho could then earn a bounty. Bro, there's no way he loses that fast. Okay, major cap, major cap. I don't think this guy could ever beat Kaido. Um, if that's the case, he would have been done it in. I'm pretty sure Luffy's gonna beat Kaido because that's just you know he's the main character. So I mean like, and it took Luffy tons of help to even defeat Kaido. So I mean this dude alone with just a meteor beating Kaido, absolutely not. That wouldn't happen. He's gonna get blast breath and deleted immediately, or you know he can just laugh at him and he'll die. He doesn't even seem that strong. Like all he has going is just his gravity, and that's not stopping Kaido like, at all and be named one of the four emperors. Which honestly, we don't know if Fujitora would be actually strong enough to take on someone like Kaido, but Facts. now we need to really stretch our imaginations and ask the question, stretch what em. if 
Kuzan was a pirate. Oh, wait. Oh, he's already, oh, he's already no, a pirate. No, ice time. Well, as the 10th Titanic captain of the Blackbeard Pirates, Admiral Okiji, or Blue Pheasant, now going by his real name. You're strong the Madara? What's Madara do anything? As pirate as you can get already. However, while we're using our imagination, let's write a bit of an alternate timeline for him as well. Now in our timeline, Aokiji doesn't leave the Marines after his fight with Akainu, and instead he leaves far earlier when he first starts doubting whether the Marines are truly represented. Nice time. In other words, after the Ohara incident. And after seeing the innocent civilians of Ohara murdered by Akainu, he decides to leave the Marines in order to seek the truth about what exactly the world government has been covering up here. And that actually makes sense because you see, Kuzan is actually based on an actor named Yusaku Matsuda, whose most famous role is playing a detective yeah, he looks just like uh, Aokiji. Fitting for someone who would want to uncover the truth of the world. And so here he rescues his old camera Saul from his ice time capsule, and together they set sail, hiding a young Nico Robin, the sole survivor of Ohara. Using the resources of Elbaf, Saul still manages to rescue. Oh, the I just, from Ohara. yeah, I might actually be stupid. Ain't no way. I just thought about it. The straw hats wouldn't exist. <laughs> I just thought about that. Um, so what happened to Luffy? This movie wouldn't make it far at all. Uh, hides all Whoa. the way, and Kuzan and Robin keep exploring the world in secret, collecting poneglyphs in order to uncover the true history. And then, as Robin grows up, she becomes officially recognized as Kuzan's first mate. Then I could absolutely first mate. see Kuzan being approached by Monkey D. Dragon, leader of the revolutionaries, but declines to join forces with them. Theirs is a journey to seek knowledge, not to wage war against the world government. However, their factions are friendly towards Oh, world, okay. As they probably are right now. However, there's actually another up-and-coming pirate with the goal of learning the meaning of the D initial and what happened during the Void Century. Joining together with Kuzan's crew as the ship's doctor is Truff. Oh! And so due to their low profile That's and a broken crew. Conflict when possible, the permafrost pirates are able to gather permafrost pirates. Bringing too much attention to themselves. That's a broken like crew. It comes from a combination of Kuzan's ice abilities along with permafrost association with finding well preserved fossils of extinct animals mm -hmm. fitting for an archaeologist like robin and all of the crew i think i mean just imagine a crew where robins and law strategically brilliant minds can enact plans without oh there to wait wait whoa 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 let's go back a tad bit what is this i see if this is from one piece earth rocket ship flight path You know what that means, bro. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Luffy there to complete I'm just saying. Much I'm not letting it go. Never. Never, ever, 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 ever. The One Piece is in space. In other words, I would argue that this crew might very well have a good shot at being able to obtain the One Piece, but later on in this video, they'll have some serious competition. For Rocks. Us. For Kuzan's Jolly Roger, I could see it being a shivering skull encased in ice, and for threatening to reveal the true history, I think Kuzan earns a bounty of 5 billion berries. But next up, we have a 5 billion is insane. And it is Kuzan's old mentor, Monkey D. Garb. Dang, bro, it's like over down here. Turning down the position. And so Garb, aka Luffy's grandpa, aka the hero of the Marines, really just makes sense as a pirate. I mean, just look at this picture of him as a child. I mean, does this little look like Luffy boy riding a tiger with a treasure? <laughs> really feel like a marine or does this look like a pirate a pirate for sure actually not 100 sure what garb's initial motivations for joining the marines actually were in the first place but we do know we know the will of d admiral that's because ever since the god valley incident he's harbored a real hatred for the celestial dragon so in our mm. timeline we'll take it one step further oh so he could be admiral okay i see so he's trying to be an admiral, but he doesn't want to. He should have slammed a Kainu. He should have murdered a Kainu right there whenever he saw Ace get downloaded. He should have done that. Oh, that'd be so good. 
ever that happened so at good. God Valley during the battle against Rox alongside Roger didn't just convince Garb to hate the Celestial Dragons, it convinced him to turn his back on the Marines entirely. And so after God Valley, we know Roger was inspired to seek out the Poneglyphs, uncover the true history, and find Love Tail, but this time he has his new best bro traveling right his alongside best him bro. as a member of his crew. And oh. Roger's death, unfortunately, I think he wasn't in the position to save Ace, and in addition, his rebellious grandson Luffy might even be inclined to become a Marine in this timeline since things are so flipped around. However, oh. like many of the Roger pirates, Garb would probably take up residence in a key point of the Grand Line, looking for and aiding the potential next. Oh, Joy the Boy. chopper Billy footsteps. Is not a Wait, Joy Boy lived at the very start of the Grand Line, Rayleigh at the halfway point, and both of them helping Luffy on his journey. And so I like to think that Garb would then settle down hmm. on Roadstar Island, which is the last official island of the Grand Line, waiting there for Joy Boy to arrive. And for his betrayal of the world government and aiding the Pirate King, Garb would probably earn a bounty of at least 5 billion berries. How are you calculating this? At it, what about another person from Rogers? I think because if I had a bounty, this said exists in one piece, right? I have a bounty of like, I'd say 10 billion low ball. And here, it's not because of my strength, you know, even though my strength is, you know, out of this world, like in space, my, my intelligence is really really up there yeah i might come off you know like like a lunatic sometimes but that's because i'm too advanced in the mind for you guys to comprehend what i'm saying or like understanding so i mean therefore uh, like come on bro i'll be high bounty for sure <laughs> Admiral as well, which makes us for ask, sure. What if Sengoku was a pirate? Now, this one is the absolute wildest. I don't like Sengoku because out of Sengoku actually Luffy's sucks. Position of Admiral Sengoku is by far the least piratey of all of them. However, there are a few instances where we do see Sengoku's faith in the Marine <laughs> organization <laughs> tested. One of these moments is the death of Rosie Nance, others, the cover up of the Impel Down escape, and even the entirety of the Shichibukai system. And so could these I'm not a be enough to make Sengoku the quintessential honorable marine quid though? Uh, honestly, probably not, but he could pretend to be a pirate as a sword member just like X-Ray. And so for uh. no one, Sengoku would set out as the captain of the actually a pirate crew, and he would frequent places actually a pirate crew in order to gather secret intel for the marines. But should you actually dare to call him on his very obvious bluff, be ready to face down against the one-eyed Buddha, his the Buddha is not strong. Like, what? The Buddha is not strong whatsoever. Well, I've seen him uh, in Marine Ford. Bruh. He got pushed back by Luffy's belly. Not strong whatsoever. Ancient Zoan form, but now wearing an eye patch, like, of course, a real pirate would. But to help make his cover even better, the Marines have given him a very convincing bounty of 10,000 berries, which is 10,000 berries? Nothing compared Bro, to my dog, I have more than that. List. But first, back to the what the Admirals, though, because we have the latest admiral that we've met in the series, Green Bull, real name Aramaki, based on a character. From oh, yeah, the Samuel plant guy. Film. Ronin guy named, well, Aramaki. Aramaki. Really, he just seems to use his new position as an admiral to run absolutely crazy with his powers. He's a devotee of Fleet Admiral Akainu and is more than happy to use violence to try to subjugate Wano under the authority of the world government. And so really, mm. had Aramaki just been a pirate, I could definitely see him being a pirate like Eustace Kid, for example. Useless Kid? Harming the weak or the innocent just because he can. And due to his survival of the fittest mentality, he might actually get along really Bros well makes with robot arms pirates, but we have a feeling that <laughs> without a zone fruit Kaido just won't let you into the crew no matter how strong you are dang to keep that theme consistent instead in order to rein Aramaki in the government would probably give him a position as a warlord so much in the way that he was conscripted into the marines as an admiral this way the government would still get to utilize his powers while giving him some free reign to commit the acts of violence that he does violence. Really seem to enjoy. What a nice person. And if you're Very nice. And if you and happen to see a forest coming towards you, you should probably turn around. It might just be the Wildwood Pirates. You can tell that for certain by the Wildwood Roger, Pirates? A skull overgrown with Another bad name of her. And their captain, the forest man Aramaki, who has a frozen one billion berry bounty that he Dang. got before becoming a warlord. 
But of course, Aramaki might actually fit in better as the subordinate of our next marine turn pirate, Zakazuki. As you know, Akainu... I feel like Akainu as a pirate, he wouldn't have any ops. If you see Akainu on a ship with an eye patch coming towards you like these, mm, yo, I don't know, man. I wouldn't want smoke with him. This dude is a walking volcano. Like, dog, you got that. Uh, uh, hey, man, you want my gold? Take my gold. You want my clothes? Take my clothes. If you want me as like a, a slave, bro, I'm all yours. Because there ain't no way I'm fighting this dude ever. Uh, I'm good. The current fleet admiral is an adherent. I'm uh, I'm good, dog. Justice. He does hate pirate with every fiber of his being and wants nothing more no. to live in a world without them. So really, what could ever convince him out of all people to become a pirate? Well, based on Sakazuki's childhood picture here, it seems like he actually had a very difficult and violent past. And so he my did? guess is that his hatred of pirates is deep. He probably in his did. Childhood, where he probably mm. suffered greatly at the hands of pirates at some point. Maybe, but what yeah. would have happened if he had actually fallen into the cycle of violence and crime instead of trying to rise above it? After all, his likeness, Bunta Sugawara, Bunta is Sagawa. playing raw, masculine, and violent characters. And so what if Sakazuki actually decided to become a pirate to end all other pirates? In other words, many What? Oh wait, that makes sense. You become a pirate To fight other pirates, but as a pirate, he's not working for the government because government has rules and regulations. But as a pirate, you can do whatever you want. You're free to do whatever you do. Makes more sense. Pirates do seek the One Piece for wealth, fame, or power, but not Sakazuki. He wants to Blood find the lusted. One Piece with the singular aim of destroying it, because that way it will never inspire another pirate to. Mm. Honestly, That'd be pretty cool. A pretty good shot at doing it as well, because Facts. there's actually a question corner quote from Oda that once said that if a Kainu was the protagonist of the series, he'd find the One Piece in one year. No need for a two-year time skip for this guy, but. Actually, oh. this is actually a I feel like Shanks could stop him, though. Translation of that quote. What Oda actually said is that with a protagonist as strong as a Kainu, he'd finish writing One Piece in a year. But isn't that even crazier? I mean, that's how much insane. Passes through. This dude has been writing One Piece for about two, two plus decades, and he said it would take him one year to finish One Piece if a Kainu was a like, wait, wait, if wait, okay, so if he was a protagonist. Which means that he'd be strong off rip. And which means that the One Piece will be close by. You need to understand what's going on. It actually it depends on where he starts. Or if it's in space, he can make a volcano and then launch himself with his own volcano into space. Because lava doesn't need to breathe. But space is also cold. So if he's in space, he'll freeze instantly. He's like some kind of ship. Never mind, I take it back. Just saying. Location in the actual space, yeah. story. Not that much less. Low than tone? It could be low tone. Sure. Just for reference, the raid on Onigashima, which was actually less than a oh. night, was published oh. over the span of two huh. real life years. So, would Sakazuki just sail straight up to all the emperors, claim their road poneglyphs, and head to Love Tail all in like one night? I mean, honestly, maybe so. Wait, but that's. If he it maybe is in low tone. Similarly ruthless crewmates. Because honestly, I would mm. absolutely see people like Shiryu, Luchi, Because and space is a, it's a good a theory. Kaido, it's really good. Hide their bloodlust behind the banner of <clears throat> justice because they would fit right in with his crew. The crew, which of course would be named the Bonsai Pirates, named for Sakazuki's uh, favorite hobby. Sakazuki would then set sail to Lafteo very quickly, his ship flying a Jolly Roger bursting from the top like a volcanic eruption, similar to how any pirate inhabited Wait, that's what the- pass wait! Through. I thought those were just called skeletons, but they're called Jolly Rogers. Wait, I'm gonna look this up real quick. Wait, actually, I'll finish the video. I'll look it up. Once he was done Jolly with Rogers. Spreading violence, carnage, and Why are you called Jolly Rogers? The One Piece world, Sakazuki would be named a Yonko, but he would have no interest in the title whatsoever or holding any territory. His goal, find the One Piece and destroy the One Piece. I think as a result, he would be fated once again to face down Kuzan, but this time not at Punk Hazard, but at mm. Laugh Tail. One of them fighting to uncover the true 
history, the other one fighting to destroy it forever. And we do all know Imagine if the One Piece was out, just Sakazuki would prove to be victorious, earning a 10 billion berry bounty and the title. Oh, uh, wait, another theory, another theory, another theory. Hear me out, hear me out. Every last remnant of Joy Boy's treasure. Akainu really is an absolute monster. No wonder that Luffy couldn't do anything to stop him at Marineford, but I do wonder if things might have been different if Luffy had already had all his hockey and gear five mm. powers at Marineford. Bro, Ohara in Grand Line Review, I kid you not, they're like the best One Piece creators. They spend so much time in their videos. Actually, they don't. They pump out like this. I'm like, bro, how? How'd you even do that? But my theory, chat, hear me out. This is pretty good. The one this is this is another theory. The one piece is just the afterlife. Let me explain. They're looking for road poneglyphs, right? In order to find something that's like a maybe they can cause hold on, let me, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack, let me backtrack, let me rethink. One piece. Everybody came from two people at the start and whenever you die your soul goes into the this place called the afterlife and it's where everybody that died goes and they're all in one place one place or one piece of the afterlife or you know of reality one piece of reality and what roger found out was a portal or a way to get to the afterlife so he could see his uh no scratch that part out just to go to find a way to go to the afterlife and that's why the poneglyphs are there the poneglyphs are there to find to figure out a way to get there without dying and therefore luffy's gonna die at the end we find the one piece no luffy's gonna die and his crew is gonna be like a sad journey for like a day and then they find the one piece right there bam and then we, let's go visit Luffy. They walk up. They open the, 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 the One Piece portal. They walk inside. Bam. See Luffy waiting for them. And everybody, like their ancestors, everybody that they met before, just waiting for them at the end. Bam. One Piece over. They all of a sudden, you hear rumbling. The chair is rumbling. Not the chair, but the, the, the tire rum is rumbling. They look around. On the ground, you see this giant spaceship come out of nowhere. Right? Giant, massive spaceship. They all go to the spaceship and it agrees. The real One Piece isn't here. Bam! The One Piece is in space. And that's what I told you guys. Bam! From the start. I knew it. Facts. Facts. You can stop here? Nah, bruh. Come on. Great theory. Amazing theory.